Hello and welcome to the commentary track for The Hanley Disappearances. Um, this is my first found footage movie and um, there's the ominous opening. Where do I begin? For anyone looking to explore the Hanley Woods, I urge you to please keep watching this video. I realize that the that the allure all these jump cuts. This film was actually written well, not really written. There was outlines written, but this is the first like proper job I've done without a single script. Um which as I, as you'll see I think kind of works for its benefit and to detract it because um there's VHS effects from uh YouTube. <laughs> Even though the film is obviously on a uh, SD card, um, yeah, I, I believe um, the film kind of detracts in the um, it kind of meanders on just setting up how evil Jason can be um, and kind of ruins the mystery of it. But on the other hand, I think. It, it has a very organic feel to the nature of the conversation. And there is Marianne Curtis, who of course will later be bitten in Revival of Dracula, tying this movie together with the Hamley, the Hamley Woods and all that jazz. And this is Jamie Hines, who previously played um, the occultist in Revival of Dracula. The whole film has a layer of um, different um, color effects to um, help, ins you know, give more of a handheld uh, VHS camera kind of feel, even though it is a digital camera, which I think is obvious. In fact, I think that's probably the same shirt he was wearing in um, Revival of Dracula. I suppose this is the film that really kind of brought out most of the mythology which is going to be used for the for the rest of the Hamley Woods films. Of course Jason's house here is um, not actually his in real life, but that's just, that's the library over there. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm well. Good. I think Jordan did a good job here because um, I didn't really have much of a character for Jason, but I did have like scraps and pieces, and I think he was able to organically create a, a new character for it. And using my directing and acting as Fred as well. Fred's not the most interesting of characters, but I do think there's a certain naivety to him which um, kind of helps the film. I think he just wants to, you know, solve it. And be like a little detective, I guess. Well, I've always kind of been into mysteries. Um, ever since I was a young boy, I can remember, you know, um, being really into like Sherlock Holmes. I really like kind of watching people like pick things apart and, you know, making. Most making of the jump cuts here are, um, are because, and, like, you know, being, obviously the characters were talking longer, but so I just kind of cut it down to where um, I felt like that, like, it had enough suspense or um, it got to the point fast enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've actually. Um, I've always kind of like uh, been inspired of by mysteries and things like that. I, from time to time, I kind of like write my own, you know, kind of stuff about it, and I, I quite like to express myself in that way. Yeah. But he seems to like. Jordan is very good at methodically like dropping clues about like Jason's um, true intentions. Though I, I feel like, you know, it's a mixed experiment. This movie, well, an experiment with mixed success, rather. I feel that. Is um, uh, I heard this, um he's very coy about it, which is very good, I think, uh, like, on your first watching. But after that, I think it completely falls apart. <laughs> Though it's a pretty cool movie, regardless of the ruining of the twist. But not that great. I'm trying to sound humble, but truthful at the same time. Sort of it's kind of gen the, the idea kind of genesis from um, where, um, G, um, my girlfriend, having an idea for a found footage movie, and me researching like Blair Witch Project and um, the, that um, the Poughkeepsie tapes, and um, basically coming up with like my own. It's just really great inspiration to write about. You know, I like researching urban legends like Jason, and I think that kind of 
would be a really interesting idea to have a killer kind of drawn in um, to the woods, um, just using his own um, fiction, kind of like creepypasta. You know, made me concerned about it. I think it's best to get it solved. By the time G was the first one we interviewed, and by that point we hadn't really clicked on whether, um, on how, um, on the fact that um, Jordan was Clive Allen at that point. Just a little quick little tidbit. I was confused about because he was basing it off of like fiction. The confusion in Jamie's voice there is actual confusion because he was kind of. I was still explaining the idea to him. Yeah, it's kind of taken over his life a little bit. It's like going to investigate like Hogwarts or something. It's ridiculous. Best case for him, he probably finds some kind of evidence to his theories and stuff. Best case in general, is he'd probably find nothing. He'd go up there and he'd just end up disappointed. And hopefully that'll put him back on the path to how he usually is, which is going like after things based on facts. People fear monsters, you know, people fear um, something that they can't see or something, you know, that they don't know. They don't know what something looks like and they seem to be afraid of it because when you don't know what something looks like, how can you see it coming? And people always assume that monsters... It's so heavy-handed, but I'm glad the um, hints are all there, and it's not just out of the blue. In reality, the monsters are... I don't think I originally intended this to be tied into the revival of Dracula. I just... I think it was during um, the editing phase when I... Um, when I was watching um, G's parts, and um, I was like, oh, she could be Mary Ann, and then it could tie in. So, chronologically, this takes place before Revival of Dracula, and then Mary Ann goes off with Paul, who happens to look exactly like Jason, into the Hamley Woods, and, um, yeah. Yeah. He's the one that wants to crack the case, like, even if there isn't one. He seems like he does have more of a knowledge about this one um, than what he usually would. He is probably hiding something more. I remember that morning walking up to Jason so clearly. You told me Michael was just around the corner. The interlacing effect on the YouTube encode of this film um, was pure accident. I think it looks awful. It looks like pixelated goo, especially when I'm walking through the woods. Um, but for some reason I can't get the interlacing right, but I'll have to work on that. Um, but, I mean, you could also say it adds to the charm of the um, idea of found footage. I like the idea of making a found footage movie, um, purely because of how easy it is, but ultimately I hate the kind of boundaries that it puts you in a storytelling sense. Everything's either like pure raw footage or a mockumentary. Because if you do anything in between, to me at least, it feels cheap. Coming up, you'll be able to see um, G and Jordan um, on the uh, left side of the screen, on the far, in the shadows. <laughs> An accident I accidentally left in. Right. Right there. Or maybe just Jordan. These woods are actually the woods in um, somewhere in um, Norton. Um, as opposed to the woods which were in the Rival of Dracula, which were mainly in Bath, but there was some location stuff over here too. Keen-eyed viewers will notice that this is the same place from the beginning of Revival of Dracula, where Marianne and Paul are walking to try and get help from their car being broken down. I do like the, um wildness of this scene though. I feel it's a very, it builds up to this very well, in my opinion. Thanks. 
though our you know you know though I don't I don't have any any acting training and he has some acting training, though not much. Um, I feel we've accomplished quite a tense scene in like at least my history of a film of being a filmmaker. Do you think they were a group of the people that mysteriously disappeared? Well, there's a chance. I mean, we, if, if so, then it's glad, I'm glad we found this because we mm. can document. Yeah. I like, um, I'm, I'm glad I cast Jordan because he has a good look for it. We were going to cast, um, one of our friends, Jace, who will be in my next film, The Secret of Faust, coming soon. Um, anyway, <laughs> but I wasn't willing to test out a new actor yet on, um, Jason because I felt Jason had to have a right person. And I was going to have someone else play Fred, but in the end, I... I figured it'd be best if I was Fred, so I could I could kind of act and direct at the same time, kind of. <laughs> that was a real knife. Um, we kind of snuck out there. We probably shouldn't have. Calm down. Like I know this whole this whole this whole project is that you on edge. I I realize that. Isn't it obvious? I'm glad we cut when we did at this point because I feel like if we that get going any longer, it could have um. Turn into real cheese. I them in. I bring them here. Like this group, this group of people, this very group, right where we stood. I killed them where they were. It's a bit blunt, the twist, but hey, I think uh, the idea of a killer who lures his prey in with his own fiction, and then mysteriously ends up keep ends keep and keep ends up writing, um, still writing fiction even while he's he's disappeared. I think is a ominous idea. I had Fred survive because uh, honestly I feel there isn't enough of that in found footage movies and there should be something to break up the mold a bit. Everybody always dies and it's getting kind of predictable. Still publishing. I think that's a really cool idea if I must say so myself. Um, I picked this music because I, I, on researching like real life mysteries and stuff, I kept hearing it in a lot of like lists and stuff, and I thought it was very creepy and ominous, and the perfect choice uh, to end it. So my next film will be um, The Secret of Faust, coming soon. To all then, um, thank you very much for checking out the film, um, my commentary rapper, and I hope you enjoyed the film. Peace out.